Hey everybody, it's your Sam again and I am here with another video. Today I want to go over a little bit of an update plus the tropes that I have in book one of I'm No Hero, actually the trilogy. So yeah, the I'm No Hero trilogy tropes. And there, so far in book one, there are about seven of them that I intentionally put in there. I kind of wanted to turn them on their head a little bit. As far as the update goes, I am currently still editing I'm No Hero book one, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I have 44 chapters in I'm No Hero and I am currently working on chapter 29. So I have about 14 and a half chapters to go and that is absolutely amazing. I hope that I will have a September 30th, October 1st finish <laughs> of that. And here soon, I will be calling on all my beta readers, the ones that said that they would be interested in beta reading I'm No Hero book one. I will warn you, it is still a beast. It's still going to be over 200,000 words. Yeah. So for those of you interested in beta reading I'm No Hero, leave a comment down below or reply to one of the calls that I'm going to put out on social media. I will also be reaching out to those who had interest in beta reading through DMs or comments or something like that. However, I can find a to reach you. <laughs> anyway, I'm No Hero Tropes. Trope number one is found family. I love this trope because found family is something that is chosen by the main characters and or by the character and by us because found families happen in real life too. You're not thrust into this family that you're born in, but you're able to choose which people you want to be around you. And Nadasha has a couple of found families. She and her father and her mother and sister in a way too. Her mother and sister kind of live separately. It's not that they're divorced or anything. It's just situations had, has happened to where Sila need, needed to be married off and that's Nadasha's sister. So they're living in the capital where there's more eligible bachelors. Anyway, <laughs> they have adopted a lot of orphans and these orphans don't necessarily all have a tragic backstory. Some of them just chose to live with them while others do have somewhat of a tragic backstory and Nadasha or her father or somebody found them and brought them to the Silver Equus family and they're there now. <laughs> Trope number two, the chosen one slash reluctant hero. I kind of put this in together because at first it is a chosen one, but as she goes along, it's more of a reluctant hero kind of thing mixed in with a chosen one. She's forcing herself to do these quests. She's forcing herself to do these things that she doesn't want to do. The only reason why she's doing them is so she can get money so her family isn't poor and the kids that they have adopted don't starve to death. So yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, she doesn't think that she's fit for the role. She doesn't think that she's enough. Therefore, she just thinks that somebody else should do it because she's going to screw it up and she's going to screw it up royally. <laughs> Trope number three, the Dark Lord. There is a Dark Lord in I'm No Hero and she's kind of obvious. Yeah, she's kind of obvious. Not going to say much about that. Trope number four, taverns. I love the whole tavern atmosphere that there are in fantasy books. And it's just kind of a home away from home. You get into to brawls, there's ale, there's dancing, there's singing. There's some kind of craziness going on always in taverns in a fantasy world. 
and that's where you're introduced as a reader to a lot of the different races that the writer might not be able to work into some of the main characters. So there you go. That's the reason why I threw taverns in there. Because there's more interaction in a tavern until later on in the book with a particular race that I have in I'm No Hero. And they all happen at taverns. Trope number five that I have in I'm No Hero are the quests. So as part of being this hero that she doesn't really want to be but she kind of does too, she has to go on these quests to save people that she doesn't know. Complete strangers at the whim of a person and the gods. So she has to do it and she hates it but it gives her experience and in the long run she kind of appreciates meeting all these new people. She is driven by helping people hence the reason why she likes the orphans and takes in a lot of the orphans. She has a heart of gold. She wants to help people. She doesn't want to leave them by the wayside. And these quests help her fulfill that need that she has. And ultimately, it helps her grow as a character and to grow out of some of the issues that she carries along with her. Trope number six is going to be the hidden truth or hidden inheritance. I kind of turned this trope a little bit on its head because it's not going to be an immediate rag to riches kind of thing. But she does find out that her family played a bigger role in the history of the country than she originally thought. And it's not because she's stupid or anything like that. It's just because the people that are in control of the country now give out this narrative to their people that the royals were always the one in power because the people in power control the history. It explains a lot as to how her father and herself are revered in other countries, but not so much in Lampras, their home country. Trope number seven, the resurrection cliche. But there is going to be a person that dies multiple times. They come back. And yeah. <laughs> I said multiple times. And the last trope is going to be the rake in love. Kind of an enemy to lover. It, it's more like a misunderstanding to lover uh, switch. But the rake in love is a trope that... I have an I'm No Hero. It kind of starts towards the end and middle of the book. That way it can carry over and create a arc into the second and third book. And that ties all of them together along with the other quests and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> the rake in love is kind of introduced towards chapter, I want to say it was 25 give or take. So good middle point of the book. And yeah, he's, he's a character and he is definitely a flirt. And for some odd reason, I like writing these characters and I hope that you enjoy <laughs> reading these characters. He's honestly one of my favorite characters in the book. Those are the eight tropes that I intentionally put into I'm No Hero and those are the ones that I've actually plotted out and didn't kind of fly in there by the seat of my pants whenever I was planting. If those tropes interest you, please make sure to keep in tune to this channel and some of my social media so that you can keep being updated about I'm No Hero progress and when it's going to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's almost ready for beta readers and like I said before if you're interested in that leave a comment down below. Again it's over 200,000 pages so prepare yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and as always be kind to one another. Stay safe, keep writing, and keep being creative and I will see you next time.